Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to temporarily disable your keyboard and software so that you can clean it. So I happen to have a wired USB keyboard and I don't like this idea of disconnecting it every time I wanna clean it. So throughout this video, we're gonna go over a couple of different solutions here depending on what operating system you have. This is gonna range from not needing to install anything all the way to downloading and running some free tools depending on what OS you have. Now. You might be wondering, why? Is this actually necessary? So, you know, in my opinion, this is especially handy, right? If you have a wired USB keyboard or you happen to have a laptop and you just want to disable your keyboard so that you can give it a good cleaning. So, of course, if you have something like uh, an external keyboard, USB wired one, you can unplug that physically, but I don't like the idea of routinely unplugging and plugging in devices. You know, that's a physical USB port that's going to go in and out and in and out, and eventually maybe it's going to break. So I like to keep my devices hooked up as much as possible here. And uh, I'm sure you know the drill, right? When you thoroughly wipe down your keyboard, uh, you're probably going to hit a whole bunch of different random keys. And that can actually have unforeseen circumstances if you get unlucky, such as maybe selecting and deleting files. So funny enough, a couple years ago, I tweeted this out here where it's like, you know, normally I wipe down my keyboard once a week, which I do. You know, I keep things pretty clean if I can. I try not to eat that much over it, but you know, crumbs and debris and other stuff just happens to go on there. And uh, when I do this, I do keep Vim open to capture as many keystrokes as I can. Uh, but yeah, in this case here, I was like, today I decided to live on the edge and I did it faster than usual. And uh, I didn't bother opening Vim there. And within three seconds, I freaking ended up shutting down Windows. So that was like asking some folks here if they had any funny stories uh, around that. And someone actually did reply and they're like, you know what? Uh, I once ended up sending an unintended email out to someone when doing this stunt, uh, basically never again. So this is a real problem here. And you know, since then, uh, you know, I do use Vim a lot here. I've had issues even with Vim open capturing keystrokes, right? For example, any global hotkeys that you might have set up will still trigger and that's going to take focus away from Vim. And now suddenly you're in this unknown state where keys can start doing some uh, unforeseen things. So needless to say, right, having your keyboard disabled so you can go to town on your keyboard with a rag once in a while is a good idea. I don't know why I uh, worded that so weirdly, but you know, you get the, the drill here. So let's first go over the no tool solution, which will work with any OS. And it's a pretty good solution in my opinion. That's why I'm starting off with it here. And uh, yeah, you know, chances are your operating system has this idea of a lock screen, right? On Windows, you can just hit Windows L. Uh, I'm not gonna do that because I actually don't know what's gonna happen when I'm recording this video here. But you know, it's a lock screen that will ask you to insert your password to continue basically. You know, Mac OS and various different distros of Linux also have this available as well. You know, maybe of course the hotkey to trigger that is gonna be a little bit different. But yeah, this is gonna disallow interacting with applications until you enter in your password. And if you have a decent password, right, the odds of you randomly typing your password while cleaning, it's basically zero, right? Um, honestly, this is a really good option. You know, on Windows, there's only really a microscopic chance of shutting down your machine by accident. If you just manage to hit tab a couple of times there to the power icon, um, and then you basically hit enter also right after that, or you do something where it's like you end up hitting control alt delete and like tabbing your way to the power off. Like these are really, really unlikely scenarios where I would be happy enough with this alone here. And uh, yeah, you only really need to worry about inputting the wrong password n a number of times which may actually lock you out of your device, you know, pending whatever your lockout policies are, right? You as the own system administrator of your uh, Windows installation or whatever, you know, you dictate what happens there if you input the password, you know, n number of times incorrectly here. But, you know, also you could not be on a personal machine, right? Maybe you have a lockdown laptop from work or something like that, and you actually can't control this lockout policy. And, you know, this idea of maybe getting locked out isn't worth the risk because then maybe, you need to, I don't know, call IT or do something else and it's gonna involve different people. Yeah, it's just maybe it's not worth the hassle there. So if getting locked out has consequences, we can actually do maybe something a little bit better here using a, a specific tool. And of course, you know, whatever tool that you decide to use is gonna depend on if you're running Windows, a Mac OS, or whatever distro or, you know, Windows Manager or desktop environment that you might have on Linux. But uh, I happen to be running Windows as you can see here. So I'm gonna focus on a Windows solution first. We'll go over Mac OS and Linux stuff in a little bit here. Feel free to skip around. I always have timestamps in the video videos here. So if you're on Windows though, we're going to cover two options. It's really the same tool, but uh, it's focused on using auto hotkey. So auto hotkey, I've done videos about this one in the past for remapping some keys. Like for example, caps lock is remapped to escape there. So it's a little bit easier to hit escape in Vim normally without needing to all the way reach up to escape. We're going to also go over a solution that happens to use an auto hotkey script, but it's already pre-compiled into an executable. So you don't even need auto hotkey installed. So yeah, if you have auto hotkey installed, then you can just use the script that we're going to go over in a bit here. Um, if not, then you can just use the pre-compiled one, which uh, yeah, then you don't need auto hotkey installed itself. Now, 
The first option is safer, right? Because then you don't have to download and run an executable off the internet. And uh, yeah, if you already have AutoHotKey installed, you know, I've done videos about this in the past. I'll leave a card if you want to go and check that one out. It's unrelated to this video, but um, yeah, I'm going to leave it up to you on which option you choose. But uh, you can download a zip file which has both the raw AutoHotKey scripts and icons as well as the executable that was compiled from that script. But before we download or look at anything, you know, let's go over this little disclaimer here first, which is over here. So here's a link to download that one. You know, by the way, this is uh, hosted on localhost right now, this blog post, but I will leave this one in the description if you want to get the link. I am not the author of this zip file. You know, I didn't create the AutoHotKey script. I also did not compile that script to an executable. So don't take it being linked to from my site as like a definitive source, source of safety there, right? You know, I do quite a lot of open source work on GitHub, uh, YouTube channel, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, we are linking to a third party location here. And uh, this zip file could be safe today, but it may be unsafe tomorrow. The contents of this file may change over time. If it actually becomes a security problem and folks actually write in saying like, hey, the contents of this change, it's unsafe, it's doing something weird, then yeah, I'll just go ahead and host it on my domain in the future because I do have a safe version of the script as well as an executable. I just didn't want to go and just host this off my domain here. When it does exist here, I also wanted to give some you know, attribution to this uh, blog post where the zip file was as well. By the way, speaking of attribution here, you know, this originally was created by someone on the AutoHockey forums, but uh, yeah, that forum post no longer exists, so it's a throwing a 404. So thank you to the original author who created it. I don't know why the post happened to disappear on the forums, but it was there at some point. Maybe someone can look that up in uh, like the Wayback Machine or something if it really matters. And uh, yeah, also worth pointing out here too, that uh, this zip file was linked from this blog post on How to Geek. So this is another website here. They basically go over the whole story of setting up um, this keyboard locking tool. Uh, they went and had it modified, or someone else did, to include the, both the executable as well as the scripts. There's some modifications to it, et cetera, et cetera. You know, this blog post goes into step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots if you want to follow along there. So, you know, I just want to give attribution to them because, yeah, this, uh, this is actually where I found this zip file initially. Um, with that said, you know, now it is up to you to choose whether or not you want to run the AutoHotKey script or the actual executable here. This is up to you. So I took a look at the script. Uh, we'll, take a, we'll take a look at it too on video in a second here too. It actually looks pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, actually, let's go ahead and just open it up now. So this is the script itself. And, you know, I do have AutoHotKey installed. So that's why I have these icons here for like an AutoHotKey script. I understand the font size is going to be real small, uh, but let me zoom in a bit and we can take a look here. Uh, I'll just go full screen for now. So normally, you know, I don't really record my entire 4K desktop, but in this time I want to because we're going to be looking at things down here in the sys tray. So yeah, this is uh, starting to be pretty big font size. I think this should be readable. Uh, but in any case, this is the entire AutoHockey script. We can see even, you know, the original author here, a link back to the forum post, you know, modifications um, over here, etc. cetera. Uh, we're not going to go over the script line by line. I actually don't really know AutoHockey scripting too well. I mean, it was super easy enough to remap some hotkeys and, you know, automatically launch programs and stuff here. But there is a, you know, a decent, amount of code here, but you know, it's not really a lot, a lot. But uh, yeah, if you just look at this without really even knowing exactly about AutoHockey, you know, there is some, you know, funky looking syntax and, you know, function calls to certain things. But if you really look at this, basically, uh, the way that it works, you know, it is just blocking the keyboard. And then it is unblocking the keyboard when a certain action happens. So maybe it would make even more sense to go over how this script actually works before we even think about like just glancing at some of the code here. So like if we go back to uh, the website itself, I'll just minimize this for now. I'll go back to the site. Yeah, actually using the script. So all you really have to do here is once the script is uh, running, then you just hit control alt and L to lock your keyboard. So right now it's not running, but let me go ahead and run it. I'm just going to run uh, the executable here. And then you can see down here, this little tooltip opened up. And if we take a look here at my assist tray, I'll zoom in if, for the sake of the video. It's a little bit if it's a little bit too small. But notice how we have this icon here for a keyboard, and it says press Control Alt L to lock your keyboard. So I'm going to do that now. So there is Control Alt L, and there's no notifications that anything happened. But if we go back to Sistray here, notice the icon now looks like it's it's locked. And then it actually says that you need to type unlock to unlock your keyboard. So if I go back to the blog post here, um, that's basically 
you know, what, what this paragraph says. But if I just start typing, this is not going to do anything. You can see or hear me, right? I'm typing all sorts of different keys. I'm literally hitting like F keys and all sorts of other keys. Nothing is happening whatsoever. Let's go back to the notepad here. You know, you see my blinking cursor. Look, no keys are doing anything. This feels pretty good. Uh, we now have a locked keyboard. So the idea here with the script, let me just go ahead and unlock it. I'm going to type in literally just unlock. Now you can see right away, you know, input is back there. You know, all the keys are being uh, pressed or input, which is nicely. But yeah, anyways, you know, basics of the code. Um, if you literally type in the word unlock after it's locked, then it's going to unlock it. Here you have this little function here for block keyboard and it's doing whatever it needs to do to make some windows, uh, I don't know, system calls here to, yeah, just lock your keyboard entirely. I'm not going to bother fumbling through the script because again, I don't know the APIs for auto hotkey, but the takeaway here is, you know, you can look at this code and you can see that there's not really anything malicious happening, right? It's not like removing files or deleting things from the registry that's going to do some bad things on your Windows box. But again, you know, at this point in time, the script is completely safe, but it's up to you on what you want to do there around running things from the internet. But in that case, you know, let's say that you got things running and you've cleaned your keyboard. I like to just right click it there and just go to exit because I am not going to continuously run this tool all the time uh, on my machine. I basically just open it when I need to. You know, I've got it just sitting there in a, a directory over here in my apps folder and I just manually open it when I need it, which is basically like once a week or something like that. It's not a big deal, but I will mention this, that um, you could have it just automatically start up when you boot Windows. It's always gonna run in the, you know your sysstray over there and then you can just hit the Control Alt L if you wanna lock your keyboard and then unlock it by typing unlock if you want. So anyways, if you're using Windows with AutoHotKey, you are then totally good to go. But what if you're using something like Mac OS, right? And Keep in mind, I can't really vouch for either of these solutions, right? Because I didn't test them because I don't have, uh, you know, a Mac OS or a MacBook to test this out that I can do it on. So these are what I came up with just Googling things and kind of doing a quick poke around and see what's available. So there were basically two solutions here. So let me start clearing out some tabs here. Uh, but yeah, the first solution that I saw was... Yeah, this one here, this keyboard clean tool. So this one came up quite a bit here. There were quite a few different Reddit posts that I saw. You know, some of them had something like 85 different uploads. It apparently is a free download here and it looks like it's focused on doing one specific thing, which is locking your keyboard and then you can unlock it as needed here. That is uh, pretty interestingly nice, right? It's very similar to the other app, assuming it works around the same way. It also pretty is pretty funny here where the author, you know, mentioned that it got rejected from the Mac store because it's not useful. But um, I personally find this type of thing useful. I don't know how much has changed since then. Your mileage may vary. There is also the second tool over here, which was this one. Um, this is created by someone who has over 200,000 YouTube subscribers. I don't know them at all, but they just happen to have a YouTube link here. So I'll just click that and just show them real quick on video now. Marco over here, you can see, you know, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say just because a high subscriber count means that they're valid uh, in the sense that this isn't malicious or whatever. I'm sure he's uh, a good developer, good person, whatever. I don't know him personally. I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, I am not vouching for this because I tested it. I just vouched for it because it came up in a Google search and it seems to be reasonably uh, well reviewed online. So. You know, I just want to make a case here, like I have no stake in this one. Personally, I would probably choose the first one only because this one seems to do quite a few different things. Uh, it doesn't just do keyboard locking. It does some other stuff around, I don't know, some window management stuff and like maybe CPU and memory, et cetera, et cetera. If you want all those things bundled into a tool that also clean or clears uh, or also locks your keyboard, then sure, give it a shot. If not, you know, it's up to you. There could also be other solutions as well. Honestly, since I didn't use Mac OS, I didn't really spend a whole lot Googling around for this one. But uh, yeah, these two seem to consistently come up. Now, with Linux, it's even different. Don't ignore this stuff. It's going to go uh, with a real YouTube video because I'm in some weird like meta world now where it's like I'm recording the video that will be put here and then all of this stuff will work. So yeah, it's only temporary stuff. But anyways, on Linux, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different or even harder to recommend than uh, Mac OS stuff, right? Well, for starters though, Linux probably you're going to be a power user, right? So I'm sure the lock screen solution without needing to do anything else is probably going to be sufficient. But if not, yeah, it's going to be really hard to offer like concrete suggestions there because one, I haven't tried any of them firsthand and it's really going to depend on whatever distro and you know desktop environment you might have, right? There could even be differences between using uh, X or Wayland and stuff like that. But uh, Google actually says there's a bunch of reasonable options using this one tool called X Input, and that allows you to uh, detect your keyboard device, and then you can actually just disable it right then and there. 
Now, of course, then you end up with this fun scenario where, you know, let's say that you use your keyboard to type in these commands here, you find whatever your keyboard device is, and now it's disabled. So how do you actually go back and re-enable it again without using your keyboard, right? So you have a couple of different options there. You know, maybe you can have it automatically get re-enabled after three minutes. I'm sure you can wire something like that with a shell script. It would be no problem whatsoever. You know, just sleep for a bit, and then uh, you're good to go here. Or maybe you can actually have a second script that you can run, but instead of running it in the terminal, like, you know, just typing out the script and hitting enter, then maybe you can just like double click it uh, with your mouse if you have like a window manager or something like that, that at least allows you to interact with a the script there by running it without using your keyboard. So both of those options um, could probably work there. You know, with that said, I would probably just Google for like Linux lock keyboard for cleaning. I find that having the cleaning term in the search uh, really helps a lot. It really focuses on posts that are, you know, related to this use case. Otherwise, you may start getting some unrelated things that that's not really going to help you uh, related to locking your keyboard in the sense that it's going to disable all the keys there. But honestly, you know, I'm not running na native Linux right now. If I were, I almost certainly would just use the, the lock screen solution there because I'm pretty sure that was def that will work for me. But uh, yeah, with that said, you know, let us know in the comments below how it went for you, depending on what OS you have. You know, do you have any funny keyboard cleaning stories where, uh, you accidentally opened up like a new dimension to uh, somewhere. I don't know. I'm sure there's all sorts of crazy things. But uh, yeah, with that said, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you in the next video.